Please let me welcome, let me put my video on, sorry. Let me welcome you all back to Strings 2020, virtual edition um, hosted out of Cape Town. We are very happy to uh, welcome you to the first plenary talk of the conference, which will be given by Rajesh Gopakumar from ICTS TIFR in Bengaluru. Uh, he will be talking to us about deriving the ADS-3 CFT2 correspondence and just before I hand over to him, let me remind you to please post any questions you have in the chat directly to me um, or to put up your hand or and to put up your hand so that I can see that you have a question. Save the questions for the end of the talk, but post, put up your hand so that I know that you would like to ask a question. And there's dedicated Slack channels to every single one of the talks. So please do go and have a chat um, in those channels if you wanna follow up on any questions you may have from the talks. We're hoping that this will be one of the most interactive strings given the new uh, technology that we're all forced to embrace. So without further ado, let me welcome Rajesh to the stage, so to speak. Uh, thank you, Amanda, and uh, good day to all of you, regardless of your time zones. Uh, as uh, the first speaker from outside of South Africa, uh, I felt I should say some words on behalf of for all the participants you're hosting. Uh, so firstly, my uh, congratulatory greetings and thanks to uh, Jeff, Amanda, and all the organizers who put together this first Virtual Strings uh, 2020 conference uh, under very challenging circumstances. So it's a real pity, of course, that we uh, we can't all assemble in Cape Town and uh, experience the beauty of the city and the vibrancy of South Africa and the historicity of uh, this being the first uh, string theory conference on the African continent. Uh, but, um, but this is, I guess, a minor loss on the scale of the larger tragedies that uh, all our societies are, uh, uh, are facing at this stage. Uh, so on the other hand, I feel inspired that uh, we have probably about 1,800 people uh, who will join over the course of this week uh, for, from across the world and to celebrate the science of our subject. Uh, and I think that's very appropriate because South Africa, in a way, as a rainbow nation, as it's called, uh, I, I think uh, it's appropriate that it should lead the way to a rainbow planet. Uh, and. Uh, uh, so thank you, South Africa. Thank you, everyone at Cape Town. So um, my talk today will uh, will be based on um, uh, uh, some work uh, with uh, Lawrence Eberhardt and Matthias Gabadil. And um, uh, so, oops. so um, uh, let me uh, first make some general remarks on the uh, on the title of my talk. Uh, so what does it mean to derive the ADS-CFT correspondence? We, of course, have this uh, top-down construction of dual pairs uh, of ADS-CFT via Maldacena's Neo Horizon limit. Uh, and uh, uh, over the last uh, two decades and more, uh, we have uh, had amazing successes uh, in terms of matching the spectrum, BPS, then integrables, uh, cases, uh, computing correlators, Wilson lines, entanglement entropy, and so on it goes. But, um, uh, but what we have often done is sort of verified the equality of both sides, and it, it still carries a sort of a miraculous and mysterious character to it, uh, the fact that we always seem to land on our uh, feet. And uh, so I think some, uh, so a part of the motivation is to sort of try to demystify this in some way, but perhaps a more um, a deeper motivation for me at least is that uh, uh, the, uh, we need to be able to delineate the scope of gate string duality and try to, uh, to get a better sense uh, for how we can systematically uh, come up with new dual pairs to what extent, what's the sort of boundary of this uh, amazing duality, uh, what's the domain of this amazing duality. And um, it should not just be a matter of ingenuity in coming up with uh, deep brain construction, so which, uh, uh, which should be, um, uh, which, uh, which are most of the cases that we understand so far. So, uh, so, uh, so I just want to emphasize that derivation here is not in some mathematically fastidious sense, uh, 
but in more from a physics sense uh, to try to lay bare the inner workings of this duality. Uh, perhaps the, the real deep reason for this will lie in some uh, understanding of the geometrization of quantum information. And uh, we've seen uh, important progress uh, through tensor networks and so on towards understanding it in, in, some, in some deep, uh, very general sense. But uh, what I will actually focus on here is a, is a less ambitious, but, uh, but in some ways a kind of a very concrete uh, goal. Um, so by limiting ourselves to uh, limiting the ambit of the question um, to uh, trying to understand the equivalence of world sheet CFTs, uh, and which describe at least certain ADS backgrounds, in a perturbative expansion, uh, the, the definition of a perturbative string theory uh, with uh, the dual large n boundary CFTs. Uh, so, uh, so we have a dictionary in most of these cases, which relates to mathematically well-defined quantities. These are separately mathematically well-defined um, entities. And the question is, can we make the equality manifest? So, uh, a large part of the dictionary of ADS-CFT, but not everything, is the quality of uh, Euclidean correlators. Uh, I, I sort of schematically uh, showed it over here. As um, uh, the left-hand side is a correlator of a world sheet theory. So when there is a world sheet description of uh, the dual perturbative string theory, um, uh, this is a world sheet correlator in a sigma model, a two-dimensional conformally invariant sigma model, uh, and um, uh, which we then sum over the random world sheets uh, of string theory, which is um, the, this integral over the modelized space. Uh, so we do it genus by genus. So we have uh, uh, correlators at, um, uh, uh, on a genus G Riemann surface with n punctures for an endpoint correlator. And the claim is that this uh, should be equal to the Euclidean correlator in the uh, boundary CFT. Um, and um, again, in a suitable large N expansion where you can pick out a genus G uh, uh, contribution. Uh, of course, when you, uh, when you make such a um, uh, equality, you have, you have in mind already that you have sort of matched the spectrum on both sides. So there is a correspondence between the objects that appear on the left-hand side, these on-shell vertex operators of physical uh, states in the world sheet uh, CFT and um, uh, the um, single trace operators on the space time CFT on the right hand side. So let me just explain the notation a bit. Um, so the um, so uh, so X will denote for me the space time position, Z will be the world sheet position, uh, the, uh, the H uh, will be the space time operator dimension which plays a important role. There'll be other additional labels characterizing the operators on both sides. I've sort of lumped them in this W. We'll, we'll actually focus on a very uh, specific case where W will have a special meaning, but this could be general, a, gen, uh, a, generic, uh, uh, a generic label. So the question is, can we transform the left-hand side correlator into the right-hand side uh, or vice versa? Um, and that's uh, what, uh, in a way, I will try to frame as uh, a derivation, at least in this uh, limited context. So we need an example where this uh, program can be carried through. and. Um, uh, uh, and uh, 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 a specific proposal uh, that uh, we made a couple of years ago um, uh, is that string theory on ADS3 times S3 times T4, which is one of the canonical examples of ADS3 CFT2, uh, with one unit of NSNS flux, uh, the smallest unit uh, of NSNS flux in some perturbative expansion in the usual string perturbative expansion is equal to the large N limit of um, a two-dimensional CFT, namely a symmetric orbifold CFT. And in this particular case, the symmetric orbifold of n copies uh, of T4 in, uh, modded out by the symmetric group that permutes these uh, copies. 
since uh, the world sheet theory here is uh, something with the NSNS flux, it can be quantized. In fact, in the usual RNS formulation of uh, string quant uh, perturbative string quantization, uh, this is essentially a Wesemino Witten model uh, uh, with uh, pieces coming from the ADS3, the S3, and T4, uh, etc. This is, uh, this of course is a well-defined model when this integer k uh, is greater than or equal to two, uh, because you see there's a SU2 level k minus two over here, and I'll come back to, uh, to that. So uh, this uh, was well studied, uh, and in fact, uh, culminating in, uh, I mean, a lot of work that culminated in about 2000 in the works of Maldasena and Uguri, uh, gave a very clear understanding of what the spectrum is and uh, also additional correlators and so on. Uh, so the important thing for us will be uh, some facts about the spectrum. Uh, the spectrum is organized in terms of sectors with, uh, uh, with a label by um, integer, uh, which can be taken to be positive integer, uh, W, uh, which labels the spectral flow or uh, more intuitively, the asymptotic winding of strings on uh, ADS3. There's another very unusual feature of the spectrum in uh, for k greater than or equal to two in that there is a continuum of long strings with which are labeled by a radial momentum, uh, which uh, is often denoted as p. So this is a picture of um, ADS3, and this is sort of a W equal to two sector long string, uh, uh, which has some radial momentum, et cetera. <clears throat> but we will actually focus on the, uh, the, the special case of K equal to one, which, in, uh, which you can think of as a tensionless limit because it's sort of the smallest uh, amount of NSNS flux you can have and uh, correspondingly, uh, stringy radius. Uh, and um, here the RNS uh, form, uh, NSR formulation I mentioned, uh, it doesn't quite apply, at least in a straightforward way. Um, but there's an alternative hybrid or Green Schwartz like formalism of Berkowitz, Waffer, and Witten, uh, which is based on a, uh, a, another Wesemino Witten model on the supergroup, which, um, uh, which uh, uh, corresponds to ADS three times S three, the PSU one comma one slash two, and level K is reflected in it being at level one. The level one theory is very special in that uh, the uh, uh, it turns out that uh, very much like in SU two level one, the spectrum uh, it, it consists of uh, very special representations. In this case, uh, these are certain short representations of PSU one comma one. Uh, slash two, which uh, translate into uh, the uh, to the statement that only the states at the bottom of this long string continuum survive. Uh, and so the um, in terms of SL two representations and the SL two quantum number j, uh, and in in general the long strings are in these continuous representations labeled by half plus i p. P was this radial momentum. But uh, for PSU 1, 1 slash 2 at level 1, uh, this P takes the value 0. <laughs> so 1 is uh, really at the, uh, uh, at the bottom of this uh, uh, continuum. Uh, and it's, um, uh, uh, so in some sense, it's a, it's a different, um, uh, it's, it's quite different from the K greater than or equal to two cases. Uh, and in our paper from uh, 2018, we actually matched um, the entire perturbative spectrum uh, of the string theory with uh, the large end limit of the symmetric orbifold CFT and, uh, and had other checks. Uh, I'll refer you to the talk of Lawrence at uh, last year's strings meeting uh, for, uh, for more details and of course our paper. But, uh, uh, but what we want to do over here, as I said, is to, uh, to do more in terms of uh, trying to have a derivation of the equality of correlators. Uh, and this is, appears to be a tractable case, as we'll see. Uh, so uh, the matching of the spectrum means that we have uh, the first precondition uh, uh, of uh, having a correspondence between vertex operators on the perturbative string theory and the uh, single trace operators on the 
uh, on the Orbifold CFT. In fact, an, a very nice feature of this uh, correspondence is that uh, the spectral flow sector that I mentioned, uh, which is present in the perturbative string theory uh, on ADS3 maps onto the twisted sectors uh, uh, of the Orbifold CFT and W labels the length of the single cycle uh, uh, twist, which labels the single particle states of the uh, symmetric orbifold. So as I mentioned, the goal is to sort of derive the relation between correlators rather than just verify uh, in this particular case. Uh, so, uh, so just for uh, concreteness in some sense, I will restrict to ground states uh, in each sector, in, uh, in each uh, W sector, twisted sector, spectral flow sector. Uh, and these are the states at the bottom of that would be continuum. Uh, we will not excite any of the torus oscillators, which are the other physical uh, physical modes. And um, uh, but um, hopefully you'll see that a lot of this uh, carries through. We'll, I'll also stick for simplicity to genus zero uh, on the world sheet and uh, or the leading large and contributions on the orbifold side. Uh, there's a very non-trivial generalization of most of the statements that I will make in this talk to higher genus, and I'll refer you to a recent paper by Lawrence uh, on that. So uh, uh, we would like to uncover in, uh, a structural reason why correlators in this world sheet CFT uh, match uh, uh, with those of the dual space-time CFT. It will turn out that uh, the, the structural reason is related to sort of a very interesting, very uh, non-obvious localization uh, uh, of the world sheet correlators. So there's a localization on the modelized space uh, of um, uh, the N-punctured Riemann surfaces uh, uh, to very uh, special points that admit holomorphic covering maps from the world sheet uh, Z, uh, labeled by Z, to the, uh, the target space or the boundary of the ADS3, uh, labeled by S2, uh, and by X, uh, lab, uh, which is on a, a sphere again, uh, and with very specified branching uh, data, WI, uh, at each of the endpoints. So there was an endpoint correlator uh, and uh, with the vertex operator insertions uh, labeled by ZI and XI. So there needs to be a branch cover uh, such that at Z equal to ZI, X is XI, and uh, it, it has a branching of order WI uh, uh, at uh, that point. And this uh, must be true for uh, all the endpoints. The, uh, so there is, um, uh, so if you demand that this is the branching data and there's a covering map, this covering map is essentially unique uh, up to a choice of, uh, uh, so if I specify the ZIs and the WIs, then the XIs are essentially fixed up to an SL2C. Uh, uh, and, um, uh, and there are in fact a discrete set of points uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the modelized space which admits such branch covering. So the claim is that this world sheet correlator is proportional to a delta function, n minus three delta function. So you recognize n minus three is the modelized space of the n punctured uh, sphere. Um, so uh, n minus three delta function. So the world sheet correlator localizes, in fact, not only a discrete set of points, a finite set of points. Um, so uh, it will then turn out that this is the key feature because it will lead to connect us to an old computation of symmetric product or before correlators uh, and a conjecture that was even made at that time that this uh, uh, that this uh, computation which involves a certain covering space construction uh, will uh, can be uh, thought of as a world sheet so in some ways we'll see a realization of uh, those ideas so this is sort of the picture that the world sheet will be a covering space and the uh, above the the sphere boundary uh, for there will be a branch cover and the branching data is determined by the uh, the w's uh, which label the uh, twisted sector or the spectrally flowed sector uh, 
So uh, to show this, I will try to uh, uh, broadly sketch a true two-pronged strategy. Uh, and so we'll first argue that um, uh, the world sheet correlators uh, uh, localize in the modelized space, as I mentioned. Uh, but moreover, uh, the, give the right contributions at these localized points uh, to uh, which can reproduce the correlators of the space-time CFT. So um, the word identities. So the first uh, step uh, follows from uh, word identities for the correlators of these uh, spectrally flowed operators. In fact, it will turn out that they have such a special. The word identities uh, uh, will have a rather non-trivial delta function solution of the kind I mentioned, provided certain conditions are satisfied on the. SL2R quantum numbers, which will be true in our case. Um, and secondly, the, uh, the second point, which is that uh, this, uh, the contribution from these special points on the modelized space, uh, uh, the localized points, uh, uh, can be evaluated by constructing an exact classical solution uh, of the sigma model that corresponds to the uh, to this covering space and which uh, will in fact connect to directly to the lunin mathor computation and in some ways manifest the quality of the uh, world sheet uh, computation with the space time computation uh, so this is the semi classical picture uh, of the world sheet embedded or uh, wrapping the uh, and the sphere uh, uh, on the boundary of ADS3, it's essentially will be glued to the uh, the boundary, but will have a certain radial profile that I will mention. So uh, let me quickly outline the uh, the um, uh, the two different prongs of this strategy. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, the first one is to try to show. Uh, that uh, the correlators localize. So uh, the word identities uh, uh, for uh, uh, for the uh, just the SL2R piece uh, turn out to be very non-trivial when you consider the spectrally flowed vertex operators. So let me uh, uh, one way to think about uh, the spectral flow is that they shift the modings of the SL2R currents, which I've denoted by J plus minus and J3. They shift the modings up and down, as you can see by W uh, over here, and here there's a shift. Uh, and so, uh, but this um, shift, uh, this um, um, moving the modes up and down, will be very crucial because uh, when you consider the spectrally flowed primary vertex operator. Uh, the OPE of the currents with these operators are not what you would naively uh, have imagined uh, because now, uh, since the mode, mode numbers have been shifted, there are a finite number of modes uh, of uh, W modes which have uh, W positive modes which have a non zero action on these uh, uh, flowed vertex operators. Uh, similarly, the J minus, which shifts the other way, uh, has uh, several negative modes also annihilating so that the, they are much more regular, regular up to Z to the W minus one uh, in the OPE than you might have expected. So this is what uh, we exploit. Uh, uh, so we have now new unknowns in the J plus OPE. There are W of them. But we also have W new equations from the regularity of the J minus OPE, as I mentioned. Uh, and uh, so if you consider a correlator uh, uh, of uh, an endpoint function and uh, with an additional insertion of these currents, uh, if you weren't looking at uh, the, uh, if you weren't looking at uh, the spectrally flowed sectors, if all the Ws were zero, uh, then you would have had the usual sort of word identity, uh, which uh, uh, reflects the global space-time uh, uh, conformal symmetry uh, generated by the uh, by the zero modes of the J. But for um, but for generic uh, WI, uh, the uh, there's a very complicated set of recursion relations which you have to uh, uh, which. Uh, you obtain uh, by eliminating these unknowns using these additional equations. Uh, and in fact, the most uh, general form of it is also very difficult to write down. And, uh, and the general solution uh, is, not, uh, uh, is not particularly easy. Uh, 
um, though there are partial results on this, but um, uh, and there's another approach uh, uh, recently that has also been uh, uh, tried to try to constrain these correlators. But what will be important for us is that there exists a very special solution to these recursion relations uh, to the uh, to these word identities, which is essentially determined when there exists a covering map. So if there exists a covering map of this kind, of the kind that I already described to you before, then the endpoint function uh, of, uh, uh, of these uh, vertex operators, these spectrally flowed vertex operators on the world sheet, um, uh, I've chosen, a, uh, I've used the uh, freedom to choose uh, for three points at zero, one and infinity on both space time and target. Uh, it takes a particular form which uh, has these delta functions that I mentioned, uh, and there's an H dependence which uh, depends on the uh, which uh, which is uh, determined by the covering map uh, by the data of the covering map. And as I mentioned, the solution only exists if uh, certain conditions on these uh, J's are obeyed. But that's uh, true in our case and. Uh, um, uh, it continues to be true even at higher genus. Uh, so, uh, so, so the uh, so the uh, unusual feature of this solution is that it's localized to a set finite set of points, uh, and those are the points on the modelized space uh, where um, uh, where this branch cover exists. Uh, uh, there's uh, the word identities themselves uh, don't fix an additional function of, that depends on the cross ratios, uh, though this can be constrained further by using other uh, uh, other physical requirements and also the cognition exam logic of equations. Um, uh, the AI, as I mentioned, depend on the branching data, uh, and uh, so this uh, uh, so the word identities already. Uh, uh, surprisingly uh, constrain the uh, uh, form of the correlator uh, to, uh, to, uh, to something which is fairly rigid. So now to come to the second point, uh, which is, uh, as I said, the word identities uh, definitely show this localization, but they don't completely constrain the, uh, the form of the correlator. To figure out the exact contribution from these discrete points, uh, that admit a covering map, uh, we take uh, we look at the um, uh, and the contribution to the path integral from these points. Uh, so, uh, so what we will do is uh, look at the ADS three sigma model. Uh, I've written it in slightly unconventional form in a first order form. Uh, uh, so, uh, let me explain. The gamma and gamma bar are uh, are the world sheet fields which correspond to the boundary directions. Uh, the sphere directions, uh, uh, and phi is the radial direction in ADS, or rather e to the e to the phi is uh, the uh, the radial direction. I, I've just uh, written it out in first order form. You can integrate out beta beta bar and uh, get it in the more uh, familiar uh, ADS three sigma model uh, metric form. Uh, so, but uh, you might be wondering why I'm looking at a uh, classical action like this when one is considering uh, the case when k, uh, the radius or the amount of NSNS -NS flux is one. This is a highly curved sigma model, uh, quite the opposite of when one should be uh, looking at uh, uh, the classical theory. Uh, but actually, there's a nice observation uh, originally probably uh, in this paper here, uh, uh, which uh, says uh, that there's uh, observation that th there's another context where you can actually trust the sigma model. This is when, uh, and uh, uh, for configurations where phi goes to infinity, uh, in other words, when the world sheet is at the boundary, because when phi goes to infinity, this nonlinear term drops out. And what you have is essentially a quadratic term, which you, uh, which is of course uh, semi-classically exact. Uh, and so, uh, and so this uh, uh, suggests that we can, if we, uh, if uh, we do find solutions, and it will turn out that our solutions are of the kind where uh, phi goes to infinity, uh, um, uh, then we will be able to uh, trust the sigma model computation. So. Um, so, uh, 
uh, first, let's look for a solution in the uh, of the ground state, the bottom of the continuum state in the W spectrally flowed sector. Uh, uh, this is actually uh, quite uh, simple. Uh, so this is just a single state which has uh, which has um, uh, conformal dimension W square minus one by four W. Or uh, uh, this uh, uh, is given by a branch cover Z to the W. Uh, and a radial profile phi, which uh, which again is the sum of a holomorphic and anti-holomorphic piece, uh, with an additive constant which actually diverges. Uh, and the way one obtains this solution is by considering the most general solution of the sigma model uh, and uh, uh, considering a scaling limit uh, where you send this momentum to zero, and this parameter epsilon can be viewed as uh, um, uh, as uh, related to that uh, uh, momentum. So going to the bottom of the continuum, one uh, finds a, a solution where uh, this, uh, this phi is essentially uh, at the boundary. Uh, and uh, so the world sheet is essentially glued to the boundary. Uh, and now one can use this uh, solution, which is for a single state, uh, to find a general solution corresponding to the endpoint correlator. Uh, and so you need to, re uh, so you, you require then that at each of the insertions in the endpoint, you obey boundary conditions, which are like this. And there's a, there's a very simple generalization of this in terms of the covering map. Uh, and, uh, and that uh, uh, just uh, promotes gamma to the, uh, the branch cover and phi uh, similarly, in terms of the derivatives uh, of gamma, and uh, and with uh, this uh, divergent piece, uh, which is, uh, shows that it's uh, essentially at the boundary. So this is the picture that I showed you earlier. The same, this radial profile, which I've written over here, and this. Um, uh, so the uh, so for, um, the uh, the world sheet is map to the boundary through this covering map, and then there's this radial profile. And uh, as I mentioned before, since these solutions are at the boundary, we can evaluate their contribution to the path integral semi-classically and connect with the ward identity solution. Uh, um, so uh, if we uh, uh, define uh, this object phi, uh, the little phi, uh, to be essentially the same as capital Phi, but absorbing the constant uh, uh, um, a, uh, so, uh, uh, so that Phi is essentially given by this conformal factor, uh, log of del gamma square. Uh, then the on-shell action, uh, the on-shell action uh, reduces to essentially a standard Liouville action uh, for, the conform for this conformal factor. Uh, uh, because the the, uh, the other pieces in the action uh, drop out, uh, and it's the the phi dependent pieces are precisely giving you these uh, 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 this contribution, and uh, so uh, so if you combine this with the ward identity, um, the world sheet correlator then takes uh, the form now with uh, this uh, additional uh, classical action coming from. Uh, um, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, this piece here, uh, and uh, uh, this was the piece we had earlier. But actually, the classical action, when you properly regularize it, uh, comes with an additional piece uh, of this kind. It it uh, this H naught is the the ground state uh, uh, conformal dimension, uh, the space time conformal dimension. Uh, uh, if you are uh, sticking purely to the ground state, as we mostly will, then this factor, of course. Uh, 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 vanishes, but uh, uh, there's good reason to believe that this is probably the general form uh, it will take even for uh, the uh, for excited uh, uh, states. And there's uh, this uh, delta function uh, uh, localized, localizing to those special points on the modelized space. Now, uh, uh, so, so this, I claim, uh, makes puts the world sheet correlators in a form which is manifestly that of the space-time orbifold CFT correlators. Uh, and for that, I need to remind you of a, a very nice approach uh, from about 20 years ago by Lunin and Mathur, uh, 
uh, to computing symmetric or before correlators in general. Uh, um, so we'll focus again on the twisted sector ground states, but but their method is general. Um, and the idea is very simple. They take uh, the uh, correlator of uh, twisted sector ground states, let's say, and they lift these correlators to the covering space. So like people are familiar perhaps from the replica trick and so on, uh, you can, uh, a twist field uh, in the base space can be lifted essentially to a vacuum insertion in, on a covering space, but now you have a non-trivial sheets uh, uh, on the covering space. And so, uh, so you have uh, now contributions from each such covering uh, and uh, each such covering map and the uh, twisted sector ground state uh, lifts uh, to uh, the vacuum state. And uh, what you get is instead of computing the correlator here, you can compute the uh, path integral on the covering space. For the case of the twisted sector ground states, this is just the vacuum path integral, uh, but more generally you can have Consider this to be five minute warning. Sorry to interrupt you, just five minute okay. warning. Okay, thanks. Uh, so uh, the coordinate dependence comes completely from the uh, conformal factor. So, uh, so the symmetric orbifold correlator, in fact, also takes uh, the same kind of form uh, that we uh, uh, that we saw earlier. There is a piece which uh, comes from the classical action, uh, and this uh, this piece is actually the same uh, action because uh, uh, because it, it arises in the lunin mathur approach by just uh, from the conformal factor uh, of the uh, lifting to the branch cover uh, and uh, the same Liouville action regularized uh, and uh, uh, together with, uh, with the additional factors. In fact, uh, these have been independently also checked uh, through, uh, through an independent approach uh, using fractional Verasoro ward identities. Uh, and, um, uh, and so we see that the computation of the world sheet uh, integrated world sheet correlators uh, essentially reduces to the same lunin mathur path integral that you would yeah, have for uh, the symmetric orbifold correlator. So without actually knowing their explicit uh, forms, you, you've sort of reduced one computation uh, to, to, to the other and realize this picture of the world sheet uh, as the covering space. So in the last five minutes, I just want to make some sort of a general remarks on this. Uh, so um, and this delta function localization is sort of reminiscent of a topological string. It carries over to higher genus correlators. Um, and in fact, uh, even in our earlier paper, uh, for when uh, you consider the single particle contribution to the torus partition function, uh, we found a similar localization to holomorphic maps there from the world sheet uh, torus world sheet to the torus boundary of the thermal uh, ADS. But I want to mention that these, uh, these delta function localization, uh, localized correlators uh, are not so strange. They're not so, uh, they have a very close analog for K greater than or equal to two. Um, uh, the, uh, the, both the one loop answer as well as the four point correlators have singularities when holomorphic coverings exist. Uh, and uh, in that particular case, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, what happened was there was the radial momentum and there was an extra integral over this continuum of the radial momentum, which sort of smeared out this delta function into a singularity. Uh, but the singularities persist at exactly the same points um, the moduli space in the high uh, for generic K as well, but it's sort of sharpened in the case of K equal to one to simple uh, delta function singularities. So this, I think, is a sort of a, um, gives a very concrete uh, um, uh, sense of what a tensionless uh, limit of string theory can look like, and, and this example, I think, exemplifies many aspects of it including the fact that, that it uh, seems like a topological string theory. In fact, there is a reduction in the number of degrees of freedom. Uh, these are uh, things that people have uh, in the folklore um, um, uh, felt a topological string theory should have. Uh, the, there's an additional fa feature which is very much like that of uh, 
free Yang Mills theory, namely that correlators get contributions from only finite genus, uh, um, and coming again from the existence of these covering maps in this particular case. The, um, there are enhanced higher spin symmetries, which uh, seem to be arising from um, the free world sheet theory because um, the PSU 1 comma 1 slash 2 model at level 1 or the sigma model that I showed you are essentially quadratic free theories when, uh, when in, this, in this limit. Uh, in flat space, the, the analog of the tensionless limit is the high energy limit, and there's a gross mende like saddle point, uh, which comes uh, from the interior of modelized space, which uh, is very reminiscent of uh, what we have over here for this classical solution coming from uh, this in, in uh, from the again from the interior of modelized space. Uh, and the, the, uh, in fact, the radial direction that I wrote down can be rewritten in this way. Uh, and it has the same kind of Coulomb gas profile that uh, the gross mende saddle point has. And um, uh, I am probably running out of time. So I will, uh, I just wanted to quickly mention that this means there's something very unusual um, and that the world sheet curvature is, uh, which you recall that this phi was identified with the conformal factor that entered the Liouville action. Uh, and the world, uh, so identifying phi with the world sheet conformal factor implies that the world sheet curvature has delta function support at these uh, vertex operator insertions as well as at the poles of uh, uh, del gamma uh, or the poles of gamma. This is very much like uh, the picture that one has when one tries to construct uh, the dual string world sheet to Feynman diagrams in free Yang Mills theory. So there was a very natural gauge there, a world sheet gauge that appeared, which had a very similar feature. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, if we draw if we look at a Feynman diagram construction of these folks for symmetric orbifold correlators, it actually is very similar. I, I think I will skip over this uh, in the interests of time. Yeah, you actually um, one minute warning, but, but. Yeah, so I'm essentially uh, wrapping up. Uh, so so, I, uh, so what I've uh, tried to argue for is the sort of structural equivalence at the level of correlators uh, of the tensionless string on ADS three times S three times D four with the dual symmetric orbifold CFT, and this essentially arises from the localization of the string path integral to a finite number of configurations, uh, and uh, and signifies I think a underlying novel topological string theory. Uh, the, uh, the, the underlying free field theory description also leads very directly to this kind of localization as something that uh, we are uh, currently uh, 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 working on. Um, the world sheet, uh, one of the aspects of this correspondence was the, uh, uh, was the fact that the world sheet is, can be identified as the covering space which wraps the ADS3 boundary. And I think this is a very good playground to study an interplay of the world sheet CFT and the space-time CFT because there's a very concrete connection here. Um, it would be interesting to study the BPS sector further, uh, duals for other symmetric orbifolds. I think something very nice and important would be to perturb away from the small radius limit by turning on a small amount of Ramon Ramon flux uh, and see how these uh, singularities are desingularized. Um, finally, I think uh, it's very likely that this will connect with uh, the approach of uh, Nathan Berkowitz to understanding the tensionless limit in higher dimensional ADS. Uh, but for that, um, stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let, let's all please, if you can unmute yourself, just to thank the speaker. I feel like the sound of a solo hand. <laughs> going to move on to move on to some questions. Thank you all. We're, we're going to lead into a session of 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 questions. Thanks for pointing out the muting all there. I'm, I'm going to unmute our first uh, questioner, uh, Shiraz Menwala, who's going to uh, start us off. 
please go ahead, Shiraz. Uh, hey, Rajesh. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, I, I, uh, I wanted to ask whether your K equals one well sheet CFD uh, can be thought of as the IR limit, or sort of the decoupling limit of a larger CFD, which describes the near horizon geometry of uh, a K uh, of n strings wrapped around a single NS file. And, uh, you know, this would be the case for K larger than one. Is this also true for K equals one? And if so, is the UV end of this, this larger CFT, this, the UV end of this, the IR end of this, la this larger CFT is your theory. The UV end of this larger CFT would be um, presumably then the theory that describes, is the world sheet theory that describes just a single NS5 frame. So could, should we expect this theory to exist? Should it be non-trivial? Or is somehow the, uh, the connection between your CFT and the decoupling limit, uh, limit of uh, strings with NS5 frames does that go away at Kegels? Uh, uh, I, I I don't have a uh, have a, uh, uh, an answer to the question. It's not something I have uh, uh, I have examined. But my uh, my intuition is that uh, the cake for one theory uh, sort of decouples into two distinct pieces because there's no Coulomb branch when you approach from the uh, far. Uh, 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 from the asymptotically flat uh, side, uh, and so in some sense, uh, you, the, uh, the the theory with the, se uh, with the single NS fibrin uh, has uh, uh, has a Coulomb branch, which has sort of which has a flat metric, which doesn't have this throat, and uh, you have uh, you have uh, uh, a decoupled sort of a bubble of ADS, which uh, would be which is something you would have gotten by taking a different order of limits of the neo horizon side. So, but uh, again, this is just a guess. Um, okay, any other questions or if you have a follow up? Okay, I see uh, Emil. Uh, Martin H have a, has a question. I am unmuting you. Please go ahead. Sorry, I just disconnected. Were you asking for me? Uh, yeah, your hand was up. Yes, it question? was. And I got, yeah. I, sorry, I got disconnected. Yeah, so I, actually two questions. Uh, one is, if if I understood correctly, the observables in this theory consist of k equals a half representations at the bottom of the continuum, essentially. So, so they're essentially delocalized in radially in the throat. So the first question is, uh, what are the prospects of calculating observables which you can actually localize somewhere in the throat? And then the second question is what you described, the correlators you described are in some sense perturbative excitations around the NS vacuum. So in the space-time CFT language, uh, things that are interesting from the point of view of like black hole physics are, are heavy operators, which have you know, dimensions of order C. So that's extremely large winding numbers. Yeah. So are there prospects for calculating correlators at large W in your formalism? Uh, I, I mean, I, I, so let me answer the first question. Uh, so, uh, so the uh, the funny thing about the K equal to one limit is that uh, there are actually no other, there are no short string or long string excitations other than the ones which have this J equal to half. Uh, so in some sense, the uh, and you see this from the uh, the spectrum as well uh, that unlike uh, uh, for k greater than or equal to two, where there are eight bosonic and eight fermionic oscillators, here you have only four bosonic and four fermionic oscillators. So there's no physical excitations on the ADS three times S three side. All the excitations are on the torus essentially, and you have this sort of. Uh, 
uh, ground state uh, excitation uh, or, or ground state uh, of the PSU 1 comma 1 slash 2 theory. So in some ways, there's nothing, there's no physical wave. It's a topological theory on the ADS3 times S3 site. There's no physical excitation. If you wish, uh, uh, the ADS is such a small box that it can't support any excitations uh, uh, within it at k equal to one. So, uh, so, uh, so that's I think uh, uh, for the first question. Uh, and the second question, uh, yes, you're right. The, uh, these are very heavy operators. Uh, uh, that if you want to uh, study black holes, I, I don't immediately see uh, any um, simple way to uh, to study that sector from. Uh, uh, things that we have right now because it would involve essentially exciting an NS5 brain like state uh, in the uh, in this theory. So yeah, these are perturbative string uh, string uh, uh, oscillators uh, oscillations around this vacuum. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? I don't see any further questions, so I'm going to unmute uh, all and uh, ask. Uh, I think oh, Andy has a question. Andy Strominger has a question. Sorry, I do, I'm not seeing it. Let me find. Oh, there you go. Sorry. Sorry about that, Andy. Uh, Andy Strominger has a question. Please do ask. I'm trying to unmute you, but I think you need to unmute yourself. Great. Um, so the fact that there's two CFTs, a world sheet CFT and a boundary CFT, is not special to k equals one. Um, it, when you go away from k equals one, of course, you're, you'll have far less control. But do you have some kind of picture or insight into what the relationship between the, uh, the boundary CFT and the world sheet CFT might be in the more general case. Uh, I think there is a, there are some partial pieces. In fact, I think a paper of uh, Lawrence and uh, Matthias uh, looked at um, the uh, uh, continuous part of the spectrum for k greater than or equal to one and uh, um, uh, of the perturbative spectrum and uh, showed that that's reproduced by a symmetric orbifold, but now with an additional Liouville piece. Uh, so there's a T4 and then there's a Liouville piece, which gives you again this continuum. So there, uh, but uh, the short string excitations somehow uh, weren't there. In, I mean, you, uh, you couldn't see that from the, uh, from the space-time CFT, at least in uh, directly, at least. Um, so, uh, so there are uh, perhaps some uh, some aspects which uh, go over, but I think uh, uh, the picture is uh, so there probably are some elements that will go over, and and the symmetric orbifolds of uh, with the Liouville will have something similar to the lunin mathur picture, and then would be a covering space uh, uh, could be a covering space interpretation there as well. So, but. But how exactly it will go, the details, uh, I think, are still to be worked out. Great. Great. Thank you very much. I see we have another question from Juan. I'm going to unmute you. Juan, please go ahead. I apologize for the children yelling in the background. No problem. Uh, I, in, in, for k bigger than two, the contributions that um, have this localization picture, these holomorphic maps, uh, give an infinite contribution. But in your case, they give a finite contribution. Could you yes. remind remind us why that is the case? Uh, the, uh, the, you mean the the contribution to the correlators? Uh, yeah, they are delta function yeah, localized, uh, and uh, uh, at a finite set of points. So, uh, so you just get the sort of the delta function contributions. Uh, and there are, there is a, there's an, um, 
uh, there are uh, there's a constant piece that you have to absorb into the string coupling, which is uh, but that's a and that's an overall uh, divergence. But uh, uh, but other than that, uh, uh, the delta function like contributions are just are integrable. Uh, I think you're referring to the fact that you have otherwise singularities which were not integrable, right? Uh, for um, well, I, I, I guess in um, for k bigger than two, there are, there is also something special about these configurations where the world sheet insertions are at the same point as the space-time insertions. Yes, um, and those normally give some infinite, some infinity. Yeah. Uh, so they are they have similarities like x minus z to some power uh, which and uh, but here the x minus z oh, okay. uh, becomes oh, okay. no, no, no. x minus z. Uh, I see it's a it's a different type of infinity. Now no, I think yeah, it it's a delta function localized infinity. Great, thank you so much. This was a really fantastic session with lots of discussion. I'm going to I'm going to end it here but can I please encourage you all to use the slack channel and the slack the specific um room or thread that has been dedicated to this topic because I, I see there's a lot of discussion uh, that's come up and there's more that could so let me finish off um this first uh session and just thank both of our speakers so far and if we could all just give a final round of applause if you can unmute yourself somehow